So, today I've got a couple great items in from Carbon Miata I'm going to be installing on the RF here. Uh, the first up will be the spider grill. I'm super excited to look and see how this is installed. Uh, I have a whole gaggle of wires on the back. I'll be going through and showing you exactly how to install these and where to install the switch. Um, I believe in a separate video I'll be doing the DRLs. But let me grab those real quick. So I also got these nice new LED, uh, I believe they're sequential DRLs. Um, I actually just put in some LEDs, but I'm really curious to see how these look as well. Um, so I'll most likely do these in a separate video, and I'll link that below as well if you want to check these out. But let's go ahead and get started on this grill. So first up here, I will be in uninstalling the, the front bumper. Um, I do have a previous video for this as well, but just to make this a full installation, I figure I might as well just go ahead and uninstall this thing again and show you exactly how this goes. So, let's get to it. The first thing up on the inside, or on the top side, is there's a couple of screws you'll end up removing. Um, I believe there's a couple of plastic push pins in here as well as a couple 10 millimeter bolts that you'll remove. Um, I fancy and I put in my own hardware here so it'll be a little bit different here in the video. But uh, once these are removed, uh, this will be the only bits here in the top half. So once these bits are removed, these will be the only bits on the top half that you'll have to take off. And the rest will just be coming from the underneath and the sides. So let's get out. Next up is removing the under tray from the bumper. There are four small screws. They are eight millimeter on the front here. You can also use a Phillips head screwdriver if you wanted to. And then onto the side, um, I actually have mine removed, but the inner fender liners, uh, there'll be a couple screws along here as well as inside the fender wells. And there's also a couple push pins inside of the fender wells. Uh, once those are removed, you should be able to take the bumper right off. With all that removed, and I believe there's a couple other bits. Um, there might be a screw here and on the other side by stock. These will just pop off. And there will also be a couple wires that you will have to disconnect from your either DRLs or just daytime running lights in general. Um, hmm. Why don't you come on over here and we'll take a look at that as well. So from here, I've already unclipped this pin that was stationed here onto the back of the DRL housing, as well as uh, basically just taking off this plug here, as well as your side markers here. So I do have some aftermarket uh, side markers wired up here. So I'll simply disconnect those as well. And there's one final push pin in the back of the DRL housing. This simply pops out if you push it from the back. Uh, if need be, you need a pair of pliers. I was able to work that out just fine, probably because I've removed it a few times now. And uh, let's take a look at the other side as well so you can have a, uh, a second view with this. So from this side, it looks like my DRL had already, or side marker had already disconnected itself. Fine, fair enough. Uh, this bit had already been disconnected and I simply need to press this switch here and this just pops off. At this point, the bumper is completely removed from the car. I'll set out my workbench for the next piece where I install the grill. So now with the bumper off, you have your DRL housings on both sides. They're basically attached by, I believe, seven or eight Phillips head screws that you'll remove, uh, of course, for doing the DRLs. Um, and then for the grill, for the most part, the grill just pops off. Um, there are six Phillips head screws lined at the top as well as two smaller plastic screws. You'll just lightly unscrew. I'll stop with the start with these first. They're like a little plastic screwing push pin. You'll unscrew them and it comes right out. I just push it back in, put them to a place where they won't get lost. And I'll go ahead and do the other side real quick too. There really isn't much force involved with taking those off. They just come right out. So next step, of course, I'll have these screws taken out. I 
And let's zoom into these clips a bit just to show you a better view of how those come undone. Uh, it's all pretty easy once you start getting at least one side going. You'll push this back, you know, do the next one, and just keeping tension pulling upward, you should be able to disconnect all of them pretty easily. Um, look these top ones, yeah. So this will go all the way around. I'll keep going at this. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Yeah. And we'll go ahead and continue on all the way around until this is completely removed. So this project I feel is a pretty easy do-it-yourself at home type. But if you want to bring it to a shop, that is your choice. Uh, let's see. What from here it just comes off, or do I need to remove the top end as well? I don't remember. Let's remove all of the pins. And then, okay. So I believe there are two similar plastic screw push pins. There's four as well that need to be removed from the top side. Not a big deal. And those are the last bits that are keeping the stock grill in place. So I'll just undo those real quick. Okay, so it looks like those are actually staying in place. Might just go ahead and put these screws back in there so that I don't lose them because they are oh so tiny. But like I said, with that done, uh, your grill is now removed. Now, I believe... So it looks like you might not have need to remove this. There are just a couple tabs there that this top piece will just unclip from. Um, and of course, the installation of putting it back into there. Yeah. Hmm. So it looks like this top piece will not be removed, but... I'll come back to that in a second. So next up, let's go ahead and get the grill installed. And it'll just go in the same way to remove the OEM grill. Get all the plastic off. Kind of arrange your wiring so it's not in the way at all. And it'll just simply snap in in the same spots that it came out. Simple as that, right? You do have to make sure I see these, these front tabs. Uh, last time I took this out, I had some issues uh, putting them back in. And this little tab here will basically slide into place. It's interesting why that one doesn't have one. But, and so from there, we'll just go ahead and start to snap it in all the way around. Okay, so now we'll just go around snapping it in. Applying pressure on uh, the back of the bumper here. So it's going in just fine. That. There's one that one doesn't have one. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Go ahead and do this side. Nice, satisfying clips into place there. Uh, yeah, and that should do it. I believe these are all in. So the next step after this, I'm going to arrange the wiring and probably run it along the bottom side of uh, the bumper just to kind of keep it out of the way. Um, I think I'll go ahead and try installing this first just to see where exactly this needs to be in place. So, with the grill in place, let's talk about wiring, right? The elephant in the room. The thing that no one wants to, no one wants to play with. Uh, so the whole first half of this is definitely the easier steps, but hopefully this video will uh, show you just a little bit how, uh, how easy these are to connect. Um, 
But the, I've also, of course, went over a very good installation thread on Miata.net, and I will absolutely link that down below. It's a great resource to read through on just where you need to connect these. In fact, I'll be reading off of it as we go along with this um, and showing you which fuses to tap into. But um, I know it comes with the gaggle wires. We're going to look it through this just real quick. I'm going to explain what they are. Um, come a little closer. So both of these lights have two sets of wires coming off of them. The outermost wires are going to the halos, and the inner wires are going to be to the lights. So the halos have both these wires connected into two uh, red and black cables. Um, so basically this will be connected to, let me check that thread there, uh, fuse number 12 that is hot with ignition. So basically when the car turns on, these turn on, simple enough. Uh, that will be where this red one is connected to in the fuse box, and we'll get into that later when I'm installing this into the car. And then this one goes into the ground. I've also found a nice uh, ground spot oh, on the driver's side behind the front bumper to the connect the grounds. So that is the halo wiring. And then the main, uh, the main fog lights wiring has a much longer cable as this will be connected to a switch that you'll be putting into your cabin. Um, coming out of this switch, you also have a red constant wire, and it is recommended that this wire is connected to fuse number 27 in your uh, fuse box. So this is an always hot uh, wire that is basically always on and is just controlled by the switch, so even when the car is off, you flip the switch and you can turn your running lights off. Uh, the other cable coming out of this switch connection is another ground. So both this ground and the ground coming from your halos will basically just be tethered together and going to the ground sources behind the bumper. Uh, while this one will be going to fuse 12 and the other going to fuse 27. I know it sounds a little difficult to start with, but I promise you this will not be too bad. We'll get the bumper installed onto the car and start running wires and all this fun stuff. Uh, one other thing I really just wanted to bring up real quick is the switch. Um, Carver Miata has provided this little plastic switch. It's not bad looking. It'll absolutely work. Um, in my opinion, there's a really nice switch that I've come across and used for years. And I just found this little sucker on either eBay or on uh, Amazon. And basically, it has a nice little click to it. It's a fully nice aluminum switch and it has a red ring. Uh, you can change ring colors, blue, yellow, whatever you want it to be. You can also have a nice um, chrome effect, but I will also link this down below if you are interested in having a nice upgrade switch with a uh, light. I just so happen to have this laying around because I plan on using it for my uh, underglow install. But yeah, so I will absolutely be using this later on in the video. Uh, so, you know, if you're asking me, hey, wait, that's not the same switch. Yeah, so next step, like I said, I wanted to run these along the sides of the bumper and have them nice cleanly and tucked out of the way uh, for getting it installed. So let's go ahead and do that. So I think I'm going to run these, uh, basically start by going down and then run them over. Um, I'm just gonna use some zip ties. I'm gonna zip tie it around. Uh, there's basically a little opening here. I can tie it to there as well as a few open holes running down this way um, that will not be in use. Here I have a few holes. So I'll probably run those down the same zip ties. And over to the, uh, to the driver's side. Basically the driver's side is where, well, in my, uh, well, in left-hand drive cars is where the fuse box will be, as well as um, the tube through the firewall into the cabin that we will be running our switch. So let's go ahead and get that started. So one additional thing that will be required for this installation is basically using uh, fuse taps. Now you could just chop off the ends of wires and wrap it around a fuse and stick that sucker back in there, but well, we're doing this the right way here. So <laughs> uh, basically you're just going to take these wires and chop off uh, the ends and use some strippers to go ahead and strip them. Diggity. And you'll use some wire crimpers, 
stick it end in the fuse here and go ahead and crimp that. Well, like I said, uh, I say this is personally a requirement um, for tapping anything into a fuse and just doing it, you know, the right way. Um, I will also put these in a link below as where to get those. Um, I think I got like a 10 pack uh, a couple of years ago off of like Amazon and it has lasted me just fine for a few different projects now. Um, As far as the grounds, I'm probably going to go ahead and leave these that have come on them as I'll simply be uh, undoing a 12 bolt nut and putting them back behind that. Alright, that is all in place. Um, You'll also have to order some uh, mini fuses as well, and I'll also link those. I actually just popped on my phone to order some because I actually don't have any in stock, but one day Amazon is my hero, and they will be here tomorrow. So, with that all done, uh, let's continue to, yeah, <laughs> cleaning up the wires. Cut. All right, cut in. So now I have the wires all zip tied up and I feel like they're in a nice, neat, uh, presentable manner. Let me just chop a couple extra zip ties here. But I have them coming through here, uh, zip tied to a couple holes. And then you just have this extra gaggle of wires. Um, I'm gonna wait and install, um, install the bumper back on just to make sure that I'd be good to shorten these. I feel like they don't need to be this long, but I'm not certain yet, so I'm not doing anything. Uh, so if need be, I'll come back to this and mention later in the video if I'll be shortening these or not. But I have these all zip tied up very nicely, as well as the wires coming off them that I need to attach to either the fuses or to the ground. And then of course, the switch wire they'll be running into the cabin. So, this is all ready to be installed onto the car. Let's do it. <laughs> Cut. All right, so with the bumper uh, somewhat in place here, <laughs> we're gonna start rerouting the wires. Uh, so the first step is I'm gonna go ahead and put the grounds on where I want the grounds to go. We'll just pull the bumper somewhat out of the way here so we can access this. So right here, there is a little grounds block. I believe most of the headlights and things are going to this, which uh, I don't know for certain what all is going here, but this is definitely a ground block, and that is where I'm placing the two grounds. So let's zoom in on that. Yes, so there is one 10 millimeter holding that on. I'm going to grab my ratchet real quick. Take that off. All right. And I'm not even going to do it all the way. I can just go ahead and put it just like that. Alright. So I've got this. As well as the other ground going to the inner lights. And I've got the switch as well pulled out of the way. So I'll be taking these two grounds and simply putting these together and tuck behind the 10 millimeter bolt that we undid. Tighten that up. And that should work as a good ground. So, the next step, um, let me show you where I'm going to route the power wire. So basically they're gonna come in and under and behind the headlight. So basically there's a space uh, where the main wiring harness comes beside the fuse box and there's a space that goes behind the headlight that I'll be running the power wires. So I'll get the bumper back in place so I can reach it a little better. And coming from underneath the car, I'm gonna go ahead and feed those upward. I see the Grounds are dangling a bit, so I'll probably have to 
uh, rewire those a bit, but that is fine. So I'll be taking the whole switch wire as well as the two fuse tap wires that we put on power wires earlier. I'm going to go ahead and feed those up from under the car. And you'll probably see those coming up here in a second. Alright. So I do have those tucked up here now. That I should be able to pull them up okay. Perfect. So I got the two tapped fuse wires as well as the switch pulled up. Uh, as for the switch, yes, so the switch will be running through the firewall in a second, but I'll be focusing first on these two tapped fuses. Um, I will have a couple fuses that I'll have to put on top of the taps. Uh, I believe the one going into, oh, I believe this is the number 12, uh, will have the 25 tap. Uh, so I will have to address one thing uh, in here right now, is I have this um, uh, tethered fuse here that is for uh, basically disabling the horn when you press the key fob. That was another project. For the time being, I'm just going to take that off. Don't worry about that. That has nothing pertaining to this project. Um, but basically the two fuses I'll be tapping is this number 12 here with the 25 and then the fuse number 27, I believe, is in the top right. But let me double check that real quick. And I believe I'll be putting this up on the screen as well, uh, just for you to see which fuse positions that you'll be tapping into. So yes, uh, this was the number 12 position with a 25 watt fuse, or amp fuse. And the number 27 position is open, and I believe that one is the constant power. Um, so this was the one <laughs> going from the halos. Maybe mark those before you, uh, before you put them up. But I'm going to go ahead and tap that in there now. As well as pulling out this number 25 here. And this shouldn't activate anything because I don't have fuses actually in the top of these fuse taps. So I was saying before, I wasn't sure if I was going to have to shorten uh, the wires that I had previously cleaned up and uh, zip tied onto the bumper, but there is a lot of extra wiring down there and I will absolutely be uh, shortening those wires just to clean everything up. But uh, for the time being, this is set. These fuses are in place. Your number 27, your number, or your number 12, and your number 27. And uh, yeah, let's continue to the switch wire, and this should be one of the last pieces here. So I've got my switch wire running back towards the firewall. Now there's two spots that you can tap this through. Let me zoom in a bit. Here on the top, I have this little, this little plug. This was where the sound tube goes through, uh, you know, comes off of your intake and where the sound tube goes into your cabin. Uh, I have that deleted and a plug, and this is where I'm going to be tapping this into. However, if you are retaining your sound tube, there is a little nipple down below it coming through where your main wiring harness goes through the firewall. You can simply tap into that as well. That also works. Um, I'm personally going to drill a hole through my little wire here and run the switch through that. It seems like there should be just enough wire to actually run this through. So I will be popping this through and taking off the switch. Like I said earlier, most likely using my own switch. And yeah, feeding this through and basically coming into the cabin and grabbing through that wire. Um, I'm probably going to feed it a good amount through to the point where it should just reach the floor. In which case, I just have to find a good um, position to mount that switch. I have a couple places in mind, but uh, I do want to plan out future switches that I'll be putting in place. For example, my underglow kit. Uh, I want to switch for that. 
perfect. So I'll be running it to the side of the main wiring harness that goes through. Another extra wire there. So I'll go back to currently just pushing that through. Not entirely sure at this point where this is going to end up. Um, I'm imagining it's going onto the floor at this point. Uh, it's just being fed through the power or the, the firewall. That's perfectly fine. It looks like there should be just enough wiring uh, with this kit to do so. So that's convenient. I see also running along the side here is the uh, hood latch cable. I'm wondering about what that extra wire is there. Nice. This, this should be a nice little clean stock licking install. I'm happy with that. Okay. Um, yeah. As for the plug, I'll probably end up putting that back in, just cutting a slit in the side and putting that around. Um, but the switch is in place. All right, so with this switch in place, we're gonna go into the cabin, find that wire, and find a good place to mount that switch. So let's get to it. So from inside the cabin, I have located that switch, and you can see that right by the gas pedal here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that through, and there's your switch. Uh, looks like there's just enough power or just enough wire to run this through. Now, I've seen this in a couple different places of where people are mounting it. I'm either going to do it here by the rest of the stock switches, or I've also seen it just a little bit more out of sight down here by your trunk release. Um, honestly, I want to put it here. Um, I do want to mount two switches in, so... I'm probably going to look at how to remove this panel here and best place that. Uh, we'll see if that even works. So I'm going to go ahead and cut here and take a look at all this. Plan this thing out. Uh, don't just throw the thing in here. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I have went ahead and removed the A-pillar here along with the trim. And this piece just pulled right out. Easy enough. Um, I have determined this whole button cluster here is not something you can drill into. Uh, there's a whole circuit board in the back end and just doesn't seem like a place where I'm going to be able to put this. But um, I think I will end up putting it uh, down below where the, uh, where the trunk release button is. Uh, there is an extra couple of spots in there where you can drill a hole and insert your switch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So going back a step. I want to go back and re-record this because I had actually messed up the placement of these two fuses. Um, so you've got your constant here on number 27 and this one is going to the halos. And then this one here is going to number 12 position. Uh, previously I believe I had it uh, one step over and I was just reading the diagram wrong. But this one is for your uh, only when the car is on run by uh, switched power to your inner lights. So this is all set. I've got my fuses into the fuse tabs and everything is ready to go. I've finished my switch and we'll go take a look at that next. So I've got my switch installed just above the trunk release here and let's go ahead and give that a press. So as I was saying earlier I have an aftermarket switch that will light up red when the power is on and if you look over ahead the lights are on. Let's go take a look. <sighs> All right. So the lights work and they look great. Um, so as you can see, these are uh, yellow tinted. Uh, I ended up getting the wrong lights in. I had ordered the white and yellow lights and I actually just got sent the white ones, but I want a yellow, so I'm gonna make them yellow so one way or another. I went ahead and tinted the lenses. Uh, otherwise, these would appear white. Um, but I absolutely love the way the grill looks. Came out phenomenal. The install wasn't too bad. Um, obviously the wiring is going to be the most hard part, but hopefully this video has helped you out, um, with that. <laughs> uh, I do want to mention some troubleshooting that I've had with this. Uh, of course I started off doing the fuses in the wrong place. That was one thing that was on me. Um, 
<laughs> as my battery dies. Yeah, I've got a lithium ion battery and unfortunately it does not like to hold charge all too well. Troubleshooting I want to mention with this project, right? Um, when I first connected it, I ended up blowing a fuse. Um, I had the, the switch all connected, I pressed power, and basically the wires on the switch started getting hot. If you see that, it could be a grounding issue, or um, I actually had an issue with one of the lights. I checked the front and basically one of the lights wasn't on. Uh, it turned out I had to take the plug out of the inner light and turn it around. I basically had the reverse polarity for it. Um, I've definitely seen this mentioned on the forums a few times. I don't know if it comes direct from factory swapped wrong. Kind of weird, but um, definitely keep an eye out for that if you have that issue. If you do end up blowing a fuse, that was uh, the issue I had on my hands. Um, yeah, yeah, basically the plug on the back of that, that inner light uh, can be flipped either way, even though it looks like there should be a one-way connection uh, into that. I also installed Carbon Miata's new uh, sequential DRLs uh, along with this as well, and I'll also have a video up for that. Uh, probably about the same time I'm doing this one as I did the install around the same time. Also a very easy installation for that. But I'll have a video posted and linked down below. Um, yeah, <laughs> if you have any other projects that you are interested in doing or seeing how they're done and you can't find any videos out there, let me know. Uh, I've done a few so far, like the uh, how to remove your side mirrors and door handle latch if you're wrapping your car. Uh, yeah, things like that. Uh, future projects that I personally have coming up, uh, I plan on doing a livery on this car. Um, it is currently at the end of April right now, and I definitely plan on debuting it at Miyazaki the Gap this year, uh, come late July. I forgot got the design all done up, so I'll probably be installing this fairly soon. The, um, the material is all ordered and all that fun stuff, so yeah. Uh, other things I have from this car, I have a... Uh, I'm not going to spill the beans too much, but I have a new front lip that's coming in, a uh, lip and canard setup. Very uh, interested in installing that as well. Like I said, <laughs> if there's anything else you want to see uh, installed or projects that you're interested in, uh, let me know. Uh, my name's Scott. I run Spinny Woosh and all that fun stuff. I make fun graphics and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, uh, until the next video, take care.